Let's dig into some really important factors that I have discovered over the last, let's see, I started my first video business back in 2015. So let me look back over the course of seven years of experience to help you out within your business. Number one is not like revolutionary, but it's that you need to focus hardcore in the very beginning on your portfolio. And when I'm talking about portfolio, I'm not just talking about your Instagram grid. I'm not talking about TikTok. I'm not talking about social media. I'm talking about you creating work that you are proud of and putting that on a branded website. The thing is the majority of my work doesn't come from somebody seeing me on social media. I've gotten a few jobs from posting on LinkedIn because I mainly work within the corporate space or medium sized business space. People aren't finding me on Instagram. They're not finding me on TikTok. They're not finding me in those places. So I wouldn't worry from the very beginning unless like you're in the wedding space. I wouldn't worry so much if you're trying to do corporate jobs or nonprofit jobs or like product video, those kinds of things. I wouldn't worry so much in the beginning of making sure that your social media is perfect and dialed in, whatever dialed in means. I would focus on having a really good branded website. And that doesn't mean it has to be complex. That doesn't mean you have to hire out a professional to create it for you. You can make a really good website on Squarespace. I think you can make a good website on Wix these days. I made my website on WordPress because I'm familiar with WordPress from my previous marketing days. Just have a really good website where you can put your work on there and it's branded for you. And when people ask what you're up to, you can send them the link to your website. Secondly is you need to figure out your invoicing and payment system. That's one of those things that it is not exciting to create that. It's not exciting to get it set up. It's not exciting to deal with it on a regular basis. But again, it's part of business. It's part of having a really good functioning business. And if you're complicating that process of sending an invoice out and receiving payment, if you're complicating that, then you're not gonna get paid on time, you're not gonna get paid what you deserve, and you're just going to lose a lot of time and efficiencies within that process. And again, that's just wasteful within your business. So it's really important that you figure out a system that works for you. What works for me is a website called FreshBooks. Not sponsored and not endorsed by FreshBooks at all, but I've used FreshBooks over the last almost four years to do all of my invoicing, to keep track of my clients, to keep track of how much they've spent with me, to keep track of my estimates. I have all of that contained within FreshBooks and then I can send them the invoice and if they're a traditional client and wanna send me a check, I send it to them in a PDF format and they're able to issue me a check. If they're a client that's kind of catching on, I mean, heck, it's 2022, if they're catching on to ACH payments or credit card payments, I can send them a link to that invoice and they can pay it right there. They can pay via bank transfer, ACH, or they can pay via credit card. If you can get your invoicing and your payment system dialed in, if you can get that truly dialed in, it's gonna make your life so much easier it's going to allow you to get paid a lot quicker. It's gonna allow your cash flow to be functioning a lot better. And cash flow is one of those things in the business world that we talk about a lot because I was never in this for the money. But it turns out that the money was an absolute necessity for me. If cash is not flowing into your business consistently, but you're having to pay for things, then all of a sudden you're gonna be in the red because you're not getting money in. So focus, again, this is not exciting. This is not a fun, necessarily a fun part. It can be, I guess it can become fun. Uh, it can be fun to get paid. It is fun to get paid. Um, but this is something that you need to focus on early on because if you can make this simplified for yourself and that when somebody's like, hey, can you send me the invoice and just, you just jump into the system, create an invoice, send it out to them, you can immediately get paid within a few days. If you can speed that up, it's just gonna cause you to have fewer headaches and it's going to allow your business to function a lot better. So spend the time, find a system like FreshBooks or QuickBooks or any of the other ones that are out there. Again, I really like FreshBooks, just it's really nice and simple and clean. Find a system like that and build it out and create a process for doing that. And then the third thing is one of the most important things you need to absolutely focus on. So if you've made it this far, pay attention. And that is that you need to dedicate yourself to providing a great client experience. And the emphasis is on experience. Because the thing is, is even if you're offering quality photos, quality videos, or both of those, even if you're providing insane quality, but your experience sucks, if you're horrible to work with, 
people are not going to hire you time and time again. I want people to be afraid of how much they love me. So what does experience mean? Well, let me frame this in the form of an example. Have you ever gone to a restaurant and yes, the food was really, really good, but the waiter, the waitress, the entire service, everybody taking care of you was just exceptional. They were paying attention to you. They were listening to what you needed. They answered your questions. They gave you maybe great advice on the menu. They weren't bothering you, but they were always there like when you needed a refill or if you needed a new drink. That customer service is what will cause you to come back. Yes, the food is very important. If the food was just absolutely terrible, you're not going to want to come back and eat it. But if the food was just good, but you received exceptional service, it's gonna make that food seem, feel even better. You can't offer people great, insane, amazing food, but the service be terrible. You could sit down to a meal and be really enjoying it, but like, hey, can somebody refill my water? Could somebody bring me a bottle of wine? Could somebody just pay attention to me? That is experience. So within your business, you need to make sure that you're offering the best experience possible. And some of the things that you can easily do are just show up on time. That shows the client that you're taking responsibility and that this project is important to you. Another one is to communicate effectively and to communicate timely. So if a client sends you a question right now, respond to them within the hour, respond to them within two hours. Don't wait 24 hours to respond to them, respond to them quickly to let them know that you care about them, you care about their question, you care about their inquiry. That has been something that has truly helped grow my business is me just paying attention to being really good at communication. Have a great experience. You might be one of the best filmmakers, you might be one of the best photographers in your area, but I will tell you, if your experience, if you are, if you're difficult to work with, people are not gonna continue to buy from you. It's truth, it's just the truth. So if you're going to have a successful photo, video, photo, video business, you have to have a great experience. So if there's one thing as you walk away from this video that you could do right now, is sit down and think about what is the experience like within my business? What is the experience that the client is receiving? Is that a good experience? Where can I work on that experience? Where can I fix that experience? Because that is going to help you almost more than anything else. All right, the fourth thing is I highly recommend that you buy used gear, especially when you're getting started. Don't buy everything brand new. There's no reason to buy everything brand new. There's lots of places online now that you can go and buy incredibly good, lightly used gear. So I've picked up this Canon C70 used. I probably saved about $400 by purchasing it used. I also bought this lens the EF 70 to 200, which I'm going to replace here soon with the RF. I purchased this used, saved probably three, $400 by buying this lens used. So early on, and even if you're several years into your business, don't be ashamed of buying used gear. Buy used gear. Like a lot of times people will buy gear new. They use it just a tiny bit and either they need the money back or it's just not a good purchase for them and they will sell it off and that gear has been used so little. That gear has been barely touched and you can immediately save $300, $400, $500 by buying that piece of gear used. So how you can save money within your business is buy used gear versus new gear. That's just an easy one. The fifth thing is that I would recommend finding a brand ambassador. And what I mean by that is find somebody in an adjacent market. I've talked about this in another video. Find somebody in an adjacent market who could help be a brand ambassador for you. I found somebody in PR and marketing. They don't offer what I offer. They don't do photography. They don't do video but they work with clients on marketing and their public relations. And oftentimes that work runs right alongside the work that I do. So when somebody's trying to have really good PR or have really good marketing, they need good photos, they need good videos. So that lady who I know who's in PR, whenever she's talking to her clients and they say, hey, we actually need a new video or we need some new photos, that lady is immediately thinking about me because she enjoys working with me, she knows me, so she immediately in that conversation is an ambassador for me. She's telling that client, okay, great, if you need a video, you should go and hire Trent. This happened this week. This week I closed a $3,000 project because of having that brand ambassador and that brand ambassador, that lady, 
over the course of these last two, two and a half years has brought me $50,000 worth of projects. $50,000 just because of one person. Having a great relationship with somebody in an adjacent vertical, in an adjacent market, somebody who doesn't do exactly what you do but could refer you out, find somebody like that. Like that is so, I mean, it's value. Like it's, I have a number, it's value, but it's invaluable. Like you don't, I don't know how much more she could bring to me over the next few years. So you should find somebody like that. You should definitely spend the time getting to know people in those industries, in those markets, talk to them and build really good relationships because they can become your own brand ambassador for you. All right, if, all right, that one, all right, that was five. All right, so this is six. Six, I would say you don't need to set up an LLC just yet. If you're getting started and you're just taking on a few projects, you can totally operate as a sole proprietor. You don't have to have an LLC just yet. And the reason why you may not want to set that up yet is because it costs a lot more money. It costs more money. And here in the state of Tennessee where I work and where I operate, it costs like 300 or 320 to set that up and to renew the LLC every single year. So, I mean, that's a decent size cost for any business, any small business to operate. So it's totally legal. It's totally fine for you to operate as a sole proprietor under your name, or if you don't want to operate just under your name, you can file something called a DBA, a doing business as you can file that with your state and you can call your sole proprietorship something totally different. If you wanna do that, it's totally fine. I would recommend doing that, calling it something different. And then as you get more and more projects, as you're making tens of thousands of dollars, you know, you're getting up to 30, 40, $50,000, it's becoming your full-time thing, then I would recommend setting up an LLC, paying the money for it, protecting yourself with that LLC, protecting your personal assets, that's when I would do it. But if you're just getting started, don't freak out, don't worry, you don't have to have an LLC to operate, you don't have to have an LLC to be a photographer or videographer. You can totally be, an, be a sole proprietor and I did that for the first six months back in 2019. I did that for the first six months before I filed for my LLC. So it's totally fine, it's totally legal, just take it in stride. All right, those are the important factors. Those are the important things you need to pay attention as you are starting your photo, video, both, doing both of those things. Those are the things that you need to pay attention to. Those are things that I didn't really know to pay attention to early on, but as I've gone through the course of my business, as I've worked through these things, I've been in different environments, working with different people, these are some of the most important things you need to focus on that will make your business so much more successful. So if you found this video helpful, if you liked the content in this video, please hit that like button. I want to talk more, I want to have, yeah, I wanna have a series of videos where I dive into each one of these points and more in more detail. So if you enjoyed this, if you like this, if you wanna see more of this kind of content, hit that like button and if you're not subscribed i would recommend subscribing because i'm going to talk a lot more about the business side of things and the creative side of things review review some gear if you're interested in that yeah i think there's going to be some really good value to come over the lifetime of this channel so like it subscribe it comment all right and i'll see you guys in the next video